Hey sweeties, sweet spotters and sweet people, how are you? My name is Mark Seuss, I'm your host and for this episode I talk to the German gallerist and entrepreneur Johann König. A German newspaper once called him a pop star among gallery owners and he has an amazing life story. Johann comes from a family of artists and people involved in the art industry. At the age of 11, he lost most of his eyesight in an accident involving exploding black powder. After several surgeries and partial recovery, Johann was not only able to complete his schooling with a high school diploma, he also decided to go into the art world himself. In 2002, he founded the Gallery for Contemporary Art in Berlin, which in 2015 moved into the now famous location St. Agnes, a church and community center in Berlin-Kreuzberg. His consistently sensational exhibitions and the impressive rooms of the church have made his gallery one of the most important venues for contemporary art in Germany. Johann moved on to open more galleries around the globe and has recently founded a digital art platform called Misa Art, an online platform exclusively for art where you can find limited editions, NFTs, secondary and original artworks and you can buy shares of art with fractionalized ownership. So for this episode, I talked to Johann about his career, his daily work and how art and artists have influenced him as an entrepreneur. We discussed his leap from running traditional galleries to his startup Misa.art. I was interested in his personal brand as well as the role that a brand of a gallery plays today. Johann also talks about his mission to open the art world to a wider audience. This is a great episode for all founders, creative entrepreneurs and art lovers out there. So without further ado, enjoy my talk with Johann König. Welcome to The Sweet Side. This is The Sweet Spot Podcast with Mark Zeus, investigating entrepreneurship, purpose and the creative life. Sweet people, it's a pleasure to welcome you again to the Sweet Spot podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, Johann König. He's once called the pop star of German gallerists. Johann, welcome to the Sweet Spot podcast. Thanks for having me. <laughs> pleasure. My first question is, it's we're recording on a Thursday morning. So I'm really interested as one of the most famous German gallerists. How does your day look so far or how does your day to day work look at all as a gallerist so i'm in the comfortable position to um, live uh, and work at the former saint agnes church mm -hmm. um, we live in the um, with my wife and kids we live in the apartment of the preacher man and i uh, started my day um, with uh, using my peloton uh, in mm -hmm. a weak uh, wi-fi environment <laughs> Uh, which I hope uh, holds stand um, in this conversation. Then I took my daughter to uh, the Waldorf school next door and uh, started the day uh, with a, a team meeting where we try to, um, well, it's a heads off meeting where mm -hmm. we speak with all the different um, departments. And my wife and I, and that's um, maybe actually interesting. The first point that the, a gallery, running a gallery is a real, um, it's an enterprise mm -hmm. um, or maybe not really an enterprise uh, in the business economic discussions of an enterprise, but it's a company. We employ 65 people. Um, and uh, of course, 65 people needs to uh, be um, driven and um And directed yeah. and this uh, you can't do alone so we have a great team of um, uh, different uh, segments really like a company marketing um, sales um, uh, logistic and so on mm -hmm. and um, then I oversaw quickly the installation of Aga van Koshravi and Annette Kames um, exhibition which is opening tonight mm -hmm. um, of course very Uh, restricted opening possibilities still due to Corona. 
Um, but that's a great thing of uh, St. Agnes that we have this giant space uh, upstairs and um, an amazing courtyard. So we're going to have an opening reception tonight in the courtyard uh, so we can nice. stay outside uh, and take masks off. That sounds amazing. I found a quote. It's from Magnus Resch. He wrote a book, Management of Art Galleries. And he said, gallerists are like the doorman for the art world. They are DJ and the barkeeper all in one person. So as a gallerist, you are a manager, consultant. You're part of the production of artworks. You market artists and their artworks. For all the creatives, all the entrepreneurs listening, can you tell us more about the business model of a gallery how do you build this what's your approach to be a standalone gallery i think interesting is that originally the business model of a gallery was pretty much as magnus says uh, to be the doorman mm -hmm. so that um the main function of a gallery was to provide market access to artists so if you were an artist and did not have a gallery it was very difficult to sell work yeah because um Galleries are somehow the window to to a wider market, and if um, this is still the business proposition of a gallery to the artist, I think it's quite difficult in these days. Um, and it's interesting with this um, comparison to a doorman. I never wanted to be a bouncer or doorman mm -hmm. to the art world. Mm -hmm. I thought that this is actually the biggest problem in the role of a gallery, uh, and that there are not enough galleries anyway. And uh, too many great artists uh, for too many, uh, uh, too little uh, galleries. And um, the main reason for this is, is because I think there's not so much prestige about running a gallery. It's it's very hard to be profitable with a gallery, even though you uh, collect 50% of, uh, of the sale. Um, mm -hmm. But you need uh, real estate in um, expensive neighborhoods, big spaces, overhead, fairs, and so on. So it's, a, it's really, um, uh, from an entrepreneurial point, it's, it's a big, big challenge. And now we are in times where um, this market access uh, with Web3 is more and more obsolete because yep. um, artists can publish on blockchains directly. This was mm -hmm. always a big question when looking at Spotify or looking at the disruption of many markets, how would that change the art market? And, and now we see the, uh, the change. And I think many people haven't really understood uh, how severe and significant mm -hmm. this uh, change is going to be. But it's fantastic. I, I really uh, celebrate it. And I think it's um, because it, it on one way, it makes a gallerist more and more ir irrelevant. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, it makes the gallerist um, more important than ever because there's more um, art visible, there's more, there are more platforms. That's why we founded also an exclusive art platform, like uh, exclusive not from, from the audience or from the participants, mm -hmm. uh, but from that is exclusively art. So uh, it's called Misa.art and we provide a platform for artists uh, for NFTs, Uh, limited editions, original artworks, secondary market artworks from 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 collectors, fractionalized ownership that you mm -hmm. can buy shares of art. So it's like a it's like a one stop shop uh, solution uh, for for the art market, but mm -hmm. only art. So when you look at yeah. OpenSea or Nifty Gateway as NFT marketplaces, they um, sell everything. Um, uh, regarded to yeah. NFTs, and we yeah. we do physical and digital art, and this is our attempt to somehow open the door to a new um, to a new art world. Of course, we it's a separate company from König Gallery. König mm -hmm. Gallery, we, we we of course keep on running with a very personal touch, very yeah. boutique. Um, um, and and I, I'm very happy about these times right now because I thought always. That this is um, the biggest misunderstanding I felt uncomfortable about mm -hmm. being considered a doorman, uh, <laughs> judging who comes in and who who doesn't. Yeah, yeah, I can I can understand that. So I also appreciate with uh, Nisa Art that you are dealing um, art NFTs only because in my experience or what I can see is there are like two sides to it. The one side is there's way more visibility to art which makes the whole curation process more important as gallerists, as people from the art world. And on the other hand, the NFTs underline the economical 
part of the art world a lot in, in what I experience because NFT can be like the first email ever sent can be a draft of a, of a digital song or whatever or it could be an, an artwork so I like the idea of putting only an NFT platform for, for real art that's that's nice yeah and we, we, we try to push it even further that it's not only an NFT platform mm -hmm. because I think important is also that art NFTs you know because NFT can be a, a insurance card and will anything. be yeah. Yeah? yeah so so anything on a contract um And I think employment contracts will be on NFTs. Everything, I think, rent, uh, everything will be on an, an NFT. And the possibilities are, are really endless. <clears throat> and I think important is also that art NFTs are... So because OpenSea is nothing else than eBay. Mm -hmm. And who would sell um, their paintings, their precious paintings on eBay if they have another possibility exactly. where they are... <laughs> surrounded by other great art so exactly. that's why i thought it's important to to pro provide a platform which is um bringing the the uh, art nfts out of out of the nft uh, soul mm -hmm. nft context mm -hmm. and then show it together with great paintings from art history uh, since the 60s with recent uh, photography recent sculpture um editions so so open it up um uh, and and close it at the same time mm -hmm. to have a Uh, have a have a art only uh, context mm -hmm. considering the future of your galleries and your your enterprise is the the digital art world something you consider a whole new branch a whole new approach do you help artists to become nft art creators or is it something you do on the side as a as a second second business arm so to speak Yeah, somehow both. So somehow there are like three players. You know, there's the König Gallery, which I run with my wife, and yep. there's me somehow as a persona and entrepreneur, mm -hmm. uh, also as an investor. I do uh, uh, quite some uh, seed investments. Mm -hmm. And then there is Misa Art as an independent company, which is not run um, by my personal taste. You know, mm -hmm. König Gallery is really yep. much the taste of my, and, and, and what my wife and I think is the most relevant figures in the respective disciplines. Uh, but Misa is a wider um, space. But my personal uh, drive is very much to to build bridges and to don't look at these uh, segments uh, different. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think there's a digital art world and there's an analog art world. I think there's one yeah. art world and that's very diverse. Yeah. And we try to... Um, we did with König Gallery, we, we uh, released NFTs by Erwin Wurm and mm -hmm. Katharina Grosse. Uh, Refik Anadol, uh, for example, was combined then with a, with a physical print. Mm -hmm. So he's a digital artist we brought into the physical world and we bring the physical artist into the digital world, but with a plan to realize one world. Because I think this idea of um, online, offline is... Uh, um, Uh, it's melting obsolete. it's melting away yeah, yeah with virtual reality yeah, yeah, i don't metaverse. think actually it exists and and also this this point of the the metaverse to come i think we live in the metaverse mm -hmm. already mm -hmm. uh, only that we hold the the phones um vertical and not horizontal um <laughs> yeah. is maybe the only yeah exactly the only difference you just talked about it your gallery you as a gallerist as an entrepreneur how important would you say is it to be a brand yourself as an entrepreneur, as the gallery owner and founder, and as König Galerie yourself? What what thought goes into building a brand as König Galerie? Uh, I think that's very important. That's why I mentioned it, that uh, actually I, 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 uh, I avoided the, the, the term brand, I mm -hmm. guess. But in fact, there are three brands. It's König Galerie, Mista, and uh, my personal brand. Yeah. And... Um, And I had a lot of resistance against it. Um, okay. Because I thought, why, you know, um, I found it a kind of a strange idea when, when listened about this in podcast and read about it in the New York Times and stuff. But after all, I think it is contemplating on this and reflecting on this helps because to differ dif differentiate, you know, in my purpose as a person and as a personal brand, is different from the purpose of König Gallery and different from the purpose of Misa. Mm -hmm. And uh, to to think about these things and and strategize a little bit, I think are very helpful um, to 
uh, understand what what uh, possibilities there are and i would always and that's for example also in, in in terms of looking about how to build a career of an artist you know because at König Gallery, 20 years now i'm building careers of artists and and it, when i were, learned one thing is that artists are in the epicenter of everything you know they mm -hmm. they i mean this entire art world only exists because of artists and um, when i started my career often a position was by artists to say like oh no i'm only the artist i'm doing my artwork mm -hmm. and that's it and that's solely not true because they make all the decisions and even though they have advisors and um, communicators mm -hmm. and gatekeepers and whatever but still the artist makes the decision mm -hmm. and um and so i think it's good to um to, to build also a personal brand as an artist as a creator as a um uh, whatever you do, yeah. um, um, I think that's uh, helpful. I mean, at the heart of every strong brand, there is a purpose. And you just talked about your purpose. Um, would you like to share your purpose as a personal brand and the gallery with us? Sure. So so my purpose is really, uh, or what drives me, is to um, open the art world to a wider audience on any aspect. Yeah. And that's why I consider myself as an... Um, Art mediator, which kind of sounds strange in English, but like Kunstvermittler in mm -hmm. in German, um, and because I art really gives um, amazing life quality and uh, carries you through dark times and opens um, new worlds and is um, somehow asking questions you um, wouldn't have think of that there's an answer. Mm -hmm. So it's really and and I think that that the That, that art managed it to, um, or the art world more than art itself, to create an environment or like a, like a situation that people think they don't understand mm -hmm. enough to look at art and, and to spend time with it. And I think that's the biggest mistake because there's nothing to understand enough to look at art. I think it's just important to, To do so, and and our and that's our uh, efforts with the König Gallery. Um, there we try to showcase the most important artists in our understanding mm -hmm. in their respective disciplines. You know, we show mm -hmm. Annette Kame, who is a fantastic um, photographer, and we think the most important photographer of her generation in that field mm -hmm. of um, portraits and still lives. Um, um, because there are many others who work like her as well, but we think she's the best. Then, for example, Aga Van Koshravi, the Iranian artist living in New York, dealing about, uh, it's it's figurative painting, but it's also very mixed media object driven, mm -hmm. uh, dealing about the women in, in Iran and, and the idea of women in general, um, like um, representational paintings. Um, and so, but then it's, 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 you know, how would you say it's very like high art, very, um, um, high bro, maybe even, you yeah. know, and then yeah. we try to, to find a way to communicate their respective practices of all the other artists as well. And to, um, to make it possible and accessible for people to just come mm -hmm. and just look and feel and, and get an idea Uh, about it and and that's really the um, um, because artists want their work to be seen and and not only to 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 its respective industry um, to a but to a wider audience mm -hmm. and it's 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 very sensitive to to do that on a way that it's not too um, uh, you know too too popular mm -hmm. or or um, Uh, it's always in a respected and and sort of holy environment. That's why we yeah. have the church, yeah. you know. To, yeah. to to um, and we are open Sundays. We do a lot different than, than most of the galleries yeah. do. So this is with Koenig Gallery, and then with Misa, it's even further to the step of because consequently with Koenig Gallery, it's very exclusive from its programmation. You know, we show 40 artists; they all um many of them 
driven by us or helped by us to to achieve big careers mm. and show in big museums all over the world and with um and so we have very limited capacity to show um more artists because it's um it's a very intense uh, work relationship it's a lot of um care and artist liaisons it's a big overhead we have more people looking after the artists than artists you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um and then there's misa which is a complete separate company and is uh, a real startup which is also um um on the way to be a um so we are we are looking at um investors uh, relations and uh, how to roll it out yeah. and growth and things like this and um so it's 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 built to scale and it's built to um um uh, to expand uh, rather quickly and that's a platform which is um much wider open um so because of course with 40 artists or, or something like this mm -hmm. limited at König Gallery is super limited it's it's still um again exclusive because it's Uh, only for art and it's curated yeah. but it's not curated by me personally um, or my my wife and me um, it's curated from a bigger team in different categories so we have editions um, nfts mm -hmm. um, secondary market artwork post-war till today mm -hmm. and then contemporary art uh, in different segments so um, it's a uh, and fractionalized uh, mm -hmm. art And um, uh, and they are different to the other um, uh, companies which do this. Like for example, Masterworks, they focus on blue chip, um, a very established Basquiat and so on. Mm -hmm. And so we go um, more emerging and mid career mm -hmm. uh, to to make it more accessible. And and because we believe we don't necessarily want to turn art into an uh, investment product. But we believe that when people can have skin in the game or sort mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. um, be part of something, you know, let's say you you love an artist and you follow and you can uh, invest also in their practice, you join them on their journey, yes. you know? Yeah. And, um, and this we do with about, I would say they are like, the goal is to have about thousand artists on, mm -hmm. the, on the platform. Mm -hmm. It's more accessible on both aisles you know on mm -hmm. the on the exactly. collectors and um, buyer side but also on the maker artist uh, side in the producer side yeah and I, i love it because that's very much aligned with your purpose as as a person as an art mediator as what you do with your gallery to make art more accessible to the world so but i i have a follow-up question because you said this is a quote-unquote real startup so I think in terms of new business model, getting external investors in, building a scalable product, so to speak, a platform. Um, how did you approach this? From when did you have the first idea to it coming to life, going online? And who did you choose as a partner? Because I can imagine it's very different running a gallery with a way smaller audience, smaller artists to work with and then opening it up. So what was your entrepreneurial journey to opening this platform? Yeah, interesting is because also for me, I needed to find, um, you know, the balance between, um, as, as I mentioned before, I never wanted to be seen as an as a gatekeeper, yeah. you know, so I'm very happy about this whole uh, NFT craze, which I think will only open the door to a more, you know, breaking the rules of, oh, as an artist, you shouldn't mm -hmm. sell yourself, mm -hmm. you know, it's bad esteem to do that, mm -hmm. which is bullshit, mm -hmm. because why should an artist... You know, they'd rather starve than mm -hmm. selling themselves, you know, <laughs> which yeah. I think is such a, and it's so funny, the art world, which I, where I come from, you know, it's like, as a, as a like privileged child of, of, of my parents who my father was a close friend of Andy Warhol and mm -hmm. Gerhard Richter was the best man of my, my, my parents and mm -hmm. my mother was a actress and it's like all, you know, like deep insight from, from 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 this like bohemian art world dynasty um of course i have found my own passion for love uh, and love for art but not to tell people what's good and bad you know yeah. and um but then still of course i need to different dif differentiate 
the program of the Königary for Mesa because um, n not everything on Mesa is like I think it's I personally think it's great but um, uh, some are more interesting than others mm -hmm. but all of them have a right to to be there and it's all art you yeah. know and it's all vetted it's and it's all yeah. It's all relevant. Exactly. That's the point. Relevant is exactly the word, you know? So, so cause, mm -hmm. um, is, is, I think, a f super interesting phenomena, but it's not my favorite, mm -hmm. uh, artist. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. but it's super relevant. And for many people, it's very relevant. So, um, and so that's what we want to do there. And, and, uh, actually, it was really due to Corona. Um, we were able to, to go this way because, I mean, I'm 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 sort of known for breaking rules and 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 don't care too much about uh, the the etiquette and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what to do and what not to do, but of course there are always certain limits. And sure. And what happened is that all art fairs uh, were cancelled, mm -hmm. and then we thought, okay, so we all suffered anyway from this huge dependence on art fairs because they're so expensive, yeah. they're so bad for the environment. They're so um, unsustainable, you know, because you, you 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 drag it all to to Miami and mm -hmm. then you ship it, you sell it all back to European sure. clients. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so then we thought, okay, how can we? And then the other point I noticed, thinking about art fairs, they are so an art fair is renting out booths to galleries, and then the list of the art fair is the names of the gallery. Yeah, and this ultimately means that uh, you need to understand what these galleries stand for yes you know so so um uh, Im imagine like i don't know what's the way to compare to it well i would compare it maybe to a to a big uh, shopping mall boutique you go to kdv in, in berlin if you know you want to buy luxury items so kdv maybe stands for a certain kind of product and luxury goods compared to Uh, Karstadt or Walmart or something. Ex exactly, but then then it's like Art Basel, which is yeah. a brand, you know. Yeah. And and people see then uh, König Gallery and uh, much uh, I don't know they don't show it Art Basel anymore, but uh, like Gagosian, Hauser Wirth, Zwirner, mm -hmm. maybe these names are familiar, but then uh, Zeno X and uh, uh, Rüdiger Schöttle. I mean, who knows what's behind these names? Who's not a deep art market yeah. insider? Yeah. So imagine you have um, a, a big music festival and it says Universal, Sony Music and um, Agro Berlin, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's like, okay, what, what um, uh, like who are the artists behind these brands? Yeah. And who are the, like the brand is at Basel, the, then all the gallery names, but who are the artists behind it? Mm -hmm. exactly. And, and, uh, and then it's so much about the gallery and I think it should be about the artists. Mm -hmm. So we thought of the, concept of an artist's fair mm -hmm. that that the the exhibitor list is the artist list and that's combined primary and secondary market so you have works directly from the artist you have works from galleries re representing the artist and you have works from collectors and um uh, companies uh, collections and yeah. dealers yeah um and then that's like the that this is how the idea was born um, so we had George Kondo and like, um, really the A to Z from 96 to today. Mm -hmm. And then this was right in the June of the first, uh, year of Corona. Uh, what was it like June, 2020? Yeah. So long ago. <laughs> yeah. And then obviously the question was how to move this uh, online. And because, uh, I mean, there's no no way around. Oh no! Actually, first it was that we had it only online for the period of time the fair was going, and then it the next step was to say, but why not? Um, so the the success was Keep so yeah. so big, and yeah. and there were so many artists who who loved the idea who wanted to join, and then we said, okay, why don't we do this all year long, and use all the knowledge existing from e-commerce in efficiency of how to display things, how to ship them, how to um, uh, present them with all the new technologies. And um, and then parallel to this, I was working on an exhibition at König Galerie uh, with Annika Meyer together, 
uh, on painting and sculpture in the digital times about yeah. artists working um, with NFTs and uh, digital art um, and painting, you know, physical and digital. And then we realized an app for König Galerie. So this was like a parallel uh, project. And then we understood the, um, we had an auction uh, of NFTs on OpenSea and noticed that all our uh, König Galerie collectors weren't able to uh, join because of the uh, complexity of open yep. up a wallet, change yep. in we yeah, yeah, yeah. in East and change in Wii's and so on. And And then we noticed, and then Beeple happened uh, right after, mm -hmm. uh, which of course um, uh, um, created so much attention. And so we were already kind of deep into this scene more or less. And then we thought, okay, we need to find a solution to make this accessible for um Uh, sort of retail collectors or not retail but you know like no normal yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. at this time um, uh, average art world consumers and then we found a way to to receive fiat payment like credit card and paypal and integrated um, uh, nfts on misa and uh, started to do experiment you know looked a lot into other other industries on how to um let people so then we thought what are the reasons why people don't buy art mm -hmm. and and how to share this experience of living with art and then because you only understand how to what it means to do something or what it means to have a painting on your wall by an artist or, yeah. or work of art live with a work of art you only know what it means if you do it so we thought how can we find a way that people try this out you know mm -hmm. and then yeah. we thought we do Uh, coming from looking at like the um, sneaker, we had an interesting moment here. Also, we had Kanye West here at the mm -hmm. Koenig Gallery um, uh, building with O32C, who are our neighbors, launching his, uh, like dropping his um, Picasso uh, baby uh, merch collection or something. Yeah. And, and these... Um, and that was super interesting to see how, how what, what impact that had. And when then, then we saw, we asked artists... Um, who, um, like Johanna Dumé, we did a, with Misa, we did a Johanna Dumé, uh, she's a French painter living in Berlin, mm -hmm. who has a big following. Her paintings are relatively inexpensive, you know, they cost like 7,000 euro, mm -hmm. but it's still a lot of money for, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. it's, too, it's too much for a young person. Yeah. So we said, why don't we do a, a, um, a 24 hour print drop? So it's it is a print, and yep. we drop we print as many prints which are ordered, and then she paints on each print, and then we so and then people are able to come into this position to own an original yes. hand signed and uh, painted yep. uh, piece by this artist they love at only uh, 300 euro. Amazing, yeah, and um, and that worked super well, and we created I think I don't know 600 uh, art collectors. Mm -hmm. Um, probably, you know, mm -hmm, new mm -hmm. people who bought for the first time. And so, so we are, um, and then we put, put it all more and more together, you know, it's, 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 and then you hit new challenges. I mean, to, to mm -hmm. deploy, uh, 600 prints, sure. uh, yeah. and have an infrastructure to, to, to do excellent, um, fulfillment, uh, fulfillment yeah. is really challenging. You know, yep. that's not what the gallery is built for. So now, and then we notice, okay, now we need a different, we need a different team. We need to build this. Um, and, and, and that's actually also a lot of time. Um, it's, it's funny because I'm, I'm saving so much time for not traveling around. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, so that's also good that the yeah. König Gallery, um, stuff is not uh, suffering from my activities in, in mm -hmm. Mises. So I'm looking for a lot of, uh, great people. So if someone hears this and, and thinks that's an interesting way, because, because we need people who, um, who have experience who know how to scale and to uh, unroll globally and um uh, and and b because we kind of have a bunch of art people here uh, who don't really know how to um mm -hmm. to build mm -hmm. a uh, it's also funny you know i never did anything else like before i even finished school i opened a gallery so mm -hmm. i have no um 
entrepreneurial, uh, I mean, I have a lot of entrepreneurial experience, but I don't know how to build a company. I mean, yes, I built a company, but not a company I want to build. I want to sure. build a um, um, really big company here. You have a lot of entrepreneurial spirit, I would say, because what you just told us is like in big parts, like textbook startup founding a company you build an mvp minimal viable product you tried it out you tested it now you're scaling it thinking about fulfillment that's <laughs> that's uh, perfect and nice very nice to hear yeah i think most important is what we did is we identify the problem exactly which i learned that's a lot now from yeah. from you know listening to to startup and how to how to um how to build a pitch book and stuff like this exactly um, is is really to and, and and that's interesting because we don't need to make that problem, you know. I think often when I hear this, I say like, ah, oh, yeah, um, world hunger is a problem, and that's why mm. we built an app to um, um, yeah. connect uh, wholesaler with retailers. And I think like, okay, fair enough. It's I mean, it's good to I think it's good to make money too, you know, because I sure. think artists want to make money because. Um, And that's a great thing about also because I get a lot of critique for this fractionalized ownership. And I do think the the bigger we get this art market, you know, the because art market is still such a niche. But if you imagine we make art market the art as popular as music mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and and sports or whatever, this will ultimately result in more artists being able to make a living of their art. 100%. They don't need to do yeah. uh, you know, they don't need to Uh, waiter they don't need to work in some advertising agencies they mm -hmm. don't want to mm -hmm. and and waste their creativity there um they can just live off selling their artworks and yeah. that's i think um very a good plan and that's interesting now thinking about investments i'm also more and more looking at the possibility of how could a DAO work you know mm -hmm. how could you sure. make this um uh, owned by the community um so it's super interesting times we are in Okay, that, and, and I can already hear there's a lot more to come. But hey, Johanna, I want to ask you something about your, your own entrepreneurial spirit. Because as you just told us, a lot of what you do is about empowering artists themselves. But also you told me growing up, you, your parents were friends. You come from a, from a whole family that's very involved with art, from your father to your mother to your uncle and half-brother. And also you grew up meeting like famous artists of their time and still today. So I wondered... Did they empower you? Did you learn something from growing up and being involved in the art world so much for yourself? Is there some way of thinking or approaching your job today that you definitely learned from the art world? I think that artists are unbelievable uh, inspirations and actually also very entrepreneurial inspirations because mm -hmm. the artist per se is a ultra entrepreneur because um they believe in something they have to hold on to for usually very long time yeah. before anybody else uh, joins in their um on the journey you know mm -hmm. and uh, and often ha are confronted with critique and that people don't believe in it so um i think maybe that's the biggest um take uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or learning from from being inspired by artists believing in their ideas and even often for a long long time you know that mm -hmm. no no one else is believing in and and they need to hold on to it to uh, finally succeed yeah. or or and they're also succeeding is different it's a different roadmap you know because first as an artist you need to be successful with your own work first mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have to find it you have to find your own language you have to And and I really I mean I also very envy it you know I would I would love to be an artist um, which I I um, I just don't have it in me so um, I wanted to then help artists amplify and that, and that's I think also what drives me so so much is to uh, you know leave it up to leave it up to the artist and leave it up to the collectors yeah you know it's like um, it's up to them you know we of course we make sure that it's a certain quality level and that it's curated but um the dynamic is 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 yet to be seen you know yeah, and um and that's something which is only possible through technology now mm -hmm. which wouldn't be um 
was just simply not possible before. Yeah, it's an it's an outreach you never had before. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I read that in an interview I, I read up front about you that you would have liked to become an artist one day, but you didn't dare to, or as you said, you don't have it in you. But today you are so much involved with picking artists, helping them, scaling them, and in a way, maybe even as a consultant, shape what they do. So I think that goes along with a lot of responsibility in a way that whatever artist you pick, you choose, um, and you help them to grow and get a bigger audience. Their message becomes also something that you have to completely align with. So I think as a curator and a gallerist, and you, you empower the artists, And that's a lot of responsibility because their narrative kind of becomes what you also align with and sign up to. So I wonder, do you feel this kind of responsibility? What messages, what arts you bring into the world? And how do you, what are your measurements? What are your foundations for, for handling that responsibility or these, what values are behind that? I mean, I, I really consider myself more of someone who's providing a space and, mm -hmm. um, and a stage Uh, in that space or stage or could be anything, you know, it can be a magazine we publish. Um, so actually that's, that's with Koenig gallery. We provide spaces in uh, two spaces in Berlin. Our main space here is this giant former Catholic church, mm -hmm. but then we, we provide a space in Seoul in London, in Vienna, uh, in Monaco. Mm -hmm. So these are all spaces by Koenig gallery. Also in the central land, Koenig gallery has a space. In the virtual world on on the blockchain um and then we provide also space with with the magazine with social media podcasts all um all this um and on art fairs also you know we rent booths to provide a space and now i think because this comes to a certain limit from its programmation and also from this expansion um we provide space now with misa to a wider audience of artists and of course with with Koenig gallery it's very personal very mm -hmm. uh the, the identification needs to be much higher um with with misa um it's much wider and i would say there are certain limits but i'm not so you know it's like the really we provide the space and the art is up to the artist i mean okay. often some it's 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 great to to be there's some artworks in the past which eventually wouldn't have happened if i wouldn't be there to mm -hmm. believe in it and, and 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 simply pay for them um and it's you know with like alicia quad for example we have super constructive uh open f uh, feedbacks and i tell her and but it's all her art you know mm -hmm. I'm, i'm i can be a good sparings partner in 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 discussing and and that of course what drives me and why i'm doing this Uh, but in the end, it's I feel more. Um, um, I'm more like a provider, you know. It's mm -hmm. it's and it's very important to to leave it to and, and they know best, you know. I think it's like artists usually really um, they know they know best what, what what's right. You said in one interview I read about you something you called your breakthrough exhibition. It was with uh, Jeppe Hein, and he created this giant ball that rolls through the gallery and destroys the wall. So it destroys the the space that provides its exhibition, so to speak. And you said there was a big move for you because it was kind of a breakthrough for you as a gallerist. And it was something that you learned to trust your intuition and follow your intuition. Is that still the case? And, and how did you learn to trust your guts? So this was, um, yeah, this was super interesting. Uh, I started the gallery uh, in uh, May 2020. No. <laughs> May 22. Two, two, no, May, May two, yeah. 2002. Yeah, so it's 20 years ago now. Wow. So, um, <laughs> and, and at the beginning, I was super conservative in what to show, also because of the influence of my father and my uncle. Mm -hmm. um, because they were keep on telling me, don't, don't take any risk, make small works. Yeah. Um, so people can buy them, put them up their uh, wall, uh, and then don't invest, you know, don't take risk of production. Mm -hmm. And, I, uh, I mean, it was my decision, but um, it's a conservative I did. Approach. I tried. Yeah, yeah. It 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 didn't it didn't uh, it didn't work. <laughs> no, because it was like, uh, and it, it's funny because I had no idea about the art market, really zero. You know, and when I opened my first show, 
I, the night before, I told Michaela, the artist, I made the calculation and I assumed that it's going to be a sold out show. And then I did not sell anything. It, I didn't sell yeah. anything in the, in, in the first three shows. I did not sell. Yeah. I sold one painting, I think, in the third show. So business was as bad as you can imagine, you know? And it was like, I was actually broke, more or less. Yeah. Um, because the only money I had, um, I had from my uncle, I um, borrowed 20,000 euro, mm -hmm. uh, which I totally underestimated how expensive it is to have an overhead. Yeah. And, and to, you know, all the side costs you do. And I didn't make a business plan and stuff, you know, so I was really wow. super naive. Real intuition, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then Jeppe Hein, who was actually super crucial in, 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 Uh, pushing me to open this gallery uh, i told him that's sort of my dream is oh you should just do it i become your first artist wow so he had this idea he had told me before about of this sphere that it's like a like a metal sphere you walk into the space and the sphere starts rolling and destroys the space mm -hmm. and i was super um uh, impressed by this idea like like um 70 centimeter um it's like what is it like four feet um yeah. or three three feet diameter uh metal ball like a wrecking ball and i thought that's a great idea it's, it's it also went played into my my love for institutional critique and minimal art and mm -hmm. or, or you know like um so and the problem was it costed seven thousand euro to order this ball from a fabricator yeah. who was like specialized on robotics and yeah. um, um kinetic sculpture and then i thought okay whatever let's do this i thought the gallery's uh kaput anyway and yeah. we ordered the i ordered the the which usually you shouldn't do because that's considered um uh What is it like a Lieferantenkredit? You know, like a delivery, like a supplier, supplier balance, yeah, yeah. supplier yeah. Uh, loan. Yeah. You know, yeah. because they didn't have the money to pay for it. So, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna solve, find some way of solving it, and, and probably that's gonna be the last show of the of the gallery. But then at least it's a it's a good one. Go out and the then yeah. um, I really had no idea where this would go, and but I loved the idea, and I thought, okay, this is, and it's interesting. I never had really. I was never afraid of failing. Um, I was afraid of not being taken serious, but I was not afraid of uh, failing. So we did this and it was um, a giant success, like really um, from a popular vote, but also from a commercial side because it was an edition of three. I sold them out all. Um, nice. And then even one to the Museum of Contemporary Art in Los Angeles. And... And then it was not only that I was able to pay for my producer debt and mm -hmm. also my rent and, and 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 continue, but I think the most crucial point was, and I was um, I was so lucky that this came at this tipping point, because I don't know if I wouldn't have had the naivety or guts to mm -hmm. do this then, I wouldn't have had the chance to yeah. do it another time because it would have. It would have been ended, you know? Yeah, exactly. So I was really lucky that it came to me this moment because not only that we made this uh, money, I learned that I needed to do what I believe in mm -hmm. and um, and that I needed to follow my... And then also, I mean, many, 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 many mistakes after. And I took many wrong decisions following my intuition, but I also took some right ones and no one can do that for you you need to do it and uh, and that was very crucial for me to um to go through this uh, period and mm -hmm. and and sometimes you lose sometimes you win you know absolutely absolutely but i i love this story because it's a story i hear a lot from both creative entrepreneurs people in the creative industry or artists that they really kind of had to hit rock bottom nearly and then reach the point where they say fuck it, I'll just do the one thing that I really want to do. I don't care if it fails. I'm at rock bottom anyway. So I'm just going to do whatever I want to do now. Because if you would have been successful before with the more traditional approach or what people recommended you would do, uh, you maybe would have never gone that crazy. You maybe would have never done this kind of exhibitions, right? 
Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and also you need to, you know, you need to gain this this mm. self confidence. You need to you need to learn that you can trust yourself, I would say. Yeah, that's a big lesson. Talking about learning to trust yourself, I mean it's a story you told many, many times. And even uh, the New York Times wrote about it. Um, as a kid, you had an accident and nearly lost your eyesight. And the New York Times wrote about you that maybe this limitation makes you one of the smartest gallerists today. And I found this article together with a quote from you that you say a lot of art looks way better than it is. So I think you have a very different approach to artworks it's more conceptual even what you show in the in the König gallery at least it's always very installational conceptual it's a lot about ex experience and also the i think the thought process behind it is what you look for so i wonder really in terms of quality how do you decide the quality of an artist or an artwork um i think that um It's really much more about the artist than the artwork. Mm -hmm. So, um, because when we represent artists at Koenig, we represent them so mm -hmm. entirely mm -hmm. with all their practice. Mm -hmm. and, and naturally, they do a lot of great work, but they also do some work which is not that great or not, not as great. Um, so, that's why it's also not so important. Um, You know, to to see each, uh, uh, you know, to the the vision. I think since Marcel Duchamp is less um, is less important than um, than you would think. Uh, mm -hmm. Thinking of visual art, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which at the first time uh, gave me anyway the possibility is, and and that I only dare to do this because the artist sort of trusted me and 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 convinced me that it's fine and that they feel understood in what they were doing um yeah what was the question what kind of criteria or what's wh how do you pick an artist what kind of qualities are you looking for is it a personal connection is it again oh, intuition? It's, or... uh, it's too too it's too wide you know at first so i mean i could i could narrow it down a little bit so As said, with König, we try to represent the most relevant ones in their respective medium mm -hmm. and, and, and area. Mm -hmm. So talking about digital art, for example, we represent Refik Anadol. And we think that he's the most important artist um, in this field and is, is um, doing it like no one else and is a pioneer in it too. Mm -hmm. So we would not show someone who is... In that, I mean, of course, why not show another digital artist um, using t uh, t technology or, you know, I don't know, I couldn't make it up now, but mm -hmm. but he's, he, he's a, and, and that applies also to, I don't know, Shiaru Shiota, who's an installation artist from, from Japan. Um, so it needs to be really, special unique and innovative mm -hmm. and and not comparable to anybody we already show that's mm -hmm. very important so you have your you have your own portfolio so to speak yeah it's 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 complex it's not only it's it it, it is very it is it is of course obviously it's personal and it's it's also carries our name mm -hmm. König, mm -hmm. you know Could, we could call it, I don't know, like another uh, Metro Pictures, you know, they invented mm -hmm. this name. Mm -hmm. It's still them doing it, but it's also, it was more sort of a school, you know, yeah. showing uh, the picture generation artists. And mm -hmm. and that's like one, and we we have artists which they couldn't be more different, but we think they are world class in their field. Mm -hmm. And I would not show another artist in their field. Yeah. Which okay. is, Get it. you know, yeah. yeah. So, um and that's sort of our criteria which is more objective than you would think i think after all mm -hmm. you know but of course they need to be good people and um um so they are and they need to be available too you know they need to be sure sure uh, it's a very competitive market yeah Let's boil it down to your to your mission or to what i consider your sweet spot in a way to make to bring more people into the art world. So I would wonder if, I'm, I'm pretty sure people are listening to this podcast now that 
have not yet approached the art world, that are a little bit too shy to just walk into a gallery. Uh, they would never dare to ask the price of an artwork. But you had you talk with so much passion about living with art and the positive impact it has. How would you describe it to someone listening now who thinks about, hey, I want to try this. What Johan says sounds amazing. I want to try live with art. How can I approach this? How do I lose my fear of approaching this somewhat elite industry? I mean, there are many great possibilities. So uh, there's in Germany, for example, mm -hmm. there are these Kunstvereine, which do Jahresgaben, mm -hmm. which are like um, uh, small artworks or limited editions by artists to uh, fund the small institution. Um, that could be a good way. Then um, magazines do often these with the artist and, uh, you know, like at, 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 at big names mm -hmm. at low price points, so to yep. speak. And then, of course, Misa.art is an um, yeah. opportunity to do that either by unique uh, work of, of... And there we experiment also with, for example, we are using um, machine learning and AI technology mm -hmm. to present the momentum of an artist so mm. if you don't uh, if you can't really because it's so difficult to navigate to understand okay i like this artist uh, but is it really um maybe i it's tough for me to 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 afford it you know yeah it, because it's depending on on the amount of money you have in in, in a free spent uh, range sure. so and then you say okay but how do i know it's really a good artist you know and then you can we have a ranking which is going objectively by third data third-party data based on recognition in the art world. Mm -hmm. The more shows you have, the more points you have. And if there's an artist, and then there's also a growth momentum, so you can see where the career is going. Uh, and that's all objective, you know? It's wow. like we are, because obviously as a seller, you're, you're buyers. So it's all objective. And then you can get a more trust, self-trust feeling for if it's worth it to you. Mm -hmm. you no know? yeah so um and and so we really try to to put all the tools on the respective customer client collector um to um make a savvy decision mm -hmm. in what to buy okay and then uh, look out for the 24 hour drops because we have like super prominent artists you have a hard time to get a uh, work for at the i don't know including frame everything 500 uh, euro wow And it's also, I mean, the the the, the mentioned Johanna Dumé print, for example, um, it's been traded now at I don't know 1,800 euro yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which is a, uh, I mean, what is that even? That's like x x five. Creating value for both the artists more, and the art world. More. Yeah, x x six. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so Johan, we talked so much about your profession and your curation process. As one of my last questions, I wonder if there is a piece of art that means the most to you as a person. Like, is there some kind of artwork in whichever form that you hold the most precious for yourself? Yeah, there is a pedestal of the earth. Um, so it's it's um, it's a concrete pedestal in mm -hmm. in Denmark, um, like in the nowhere land somehow, mm -hmm. and it's. Um, so it's the idea um, that it's um, that the 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 world itself is um, the sculpture on its pedestal. Wow, love it! And this, I think, is a very beautiful uh, idea. Okay, I will I will look that up and put a picture or a link to it in the show notes because that's <laughs> worth looking at. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, great. So, Johan, I have two more questions for you. It's the same two questions, quick questions that I ask all of my guests here. So, the first one is, is there something that is inspiring you personally on your creative or entrepreneurial journey at the moment that you would like to share with us? May it be a talk, a podcast, book, series, whatever you just saw that ignited some kind of creative process in you. Is there something you want to share with us? Um, so what I really uh, liked is uh, the book Boom mm -hmm. by um, he's a New Yorker um, journalist and that's about the rise of the New York art market from uh, Peggy Guggenheim until today. It's very um, US focused but it's an amazing read for anybody who wants to learn about this um, 
this industry. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You find that in the show notes. And my last question is, what can we look forward to? I mean, you talked a lot about your galleries and Misa.art and your personal ambitions, but um, you have an opening tonight. Good luck with that, by the way. Um, what else can Thank we look you. forward to? Where can we see something you curated other than what you already mentioned? So we are planning to um, work on a rollout of Misa uh, physical fair. So mm. that's maybe important to mention that Misa is a online platform with seasonal events. And there we are looking on how to um, host these events globally. Yeah. Um, and we are starting with one here for the gallery weekend in uh, May in Berlin, but also look for other possibilities to bring them to other capitals. Yeah. Very interesting. So I think we can read more about that on Misa.art <laughs> and we will. Absolutely. Perfect. Johan, thank you so much for your time and your little sneak peek into the world of art. To all the sweet people listening, you can find everything we talked about in the show notes, all the URLs, um, images, you, your own podcast, Johan, uh, Something with Art, the German podcast you're hosting and much more. Yeah, and the German equivalent called König Kunst. Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Ciao. Bye bye. Woo. Sweet people, what an inspiring talk. I was so happy to have Johan on the show and take a look behind the curtains of his entrepreneurial drive. I especially enjoyed his view on art, that it improves life quality and can help you through dark times but also that artists can be an inspiration for entrepreneurs in the way that artists are ultra entrepreneurs, as Johan put it, having to believe in something and hold on to it for a long time, even when confronted with criticism. I think that holds a lot of wisdom and new ideas for everyone listening. Next week, I will talk to Paul Glazer, managing director of the English Theater in Hamburg. Throughout his career, Paul has worked in many creative fields, collecting and combining experiences from decades. I wanted to know how he's going to guide the theater into the future. So that's it for this week. Take care, people, and I'll hear you again on the sweet side. This podcast is produced by Sweet Spot Studio. New episodes each week, wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you enjoyed the show, leave a rating and subscribe to never miss an episode. Find out more at sweetspot-studio.com. 